Hi, Colin Kirkland is my name from Bermad Water Technologies. Welcome to the Bermad training facility here at the Melbourne office. What we are exceptionally proud of and what we are demonstrating here is a test rig which is designed for designers, users and operators to get up very close and personal to control valves, meters, air valves and really get a hands-on understanding of how these products work and how they influence what they're going to operate like in a pipeline. But what we're going to do today is we're looking at the brand new facility which we have here which demonstrates exactly how air release valves operate, uh, how um, the airflow performance works and get a really good understanding on how this is going to impact on a pipeline design that you might be incorporating. So what we're looking at here is a static test facility showing how we demonstrate how much water pressure is actually required for valves to seal. So we have the water mains pressure coming in through these blue taps here and filling into this common manifold where we're demonstrating some typical air release valves which are used on the market. And here with this pressure gauge we can see the positive water pressure which is required for the air valves to seal. Now visually as well as the gauge going up and down, we can see on the clear tube here, we can see that rising as high as almost five or five and a half meters. So as well as seeing the gauge, you'll get a visual to what's actually going on here. So let's talk a little bit about what this means. What does low pressure sealing or what does sealing pressure mean when you're designing a pipeline? If you had a fairly flat topography pipeline, let's say for example it was one kilometre long and it only had say two metres of static pressure between the start to the end of the pipeline. When you turn the pumps off, you're going to have very low pressure. Now, if you don't have enough pressure for valves to seal, they're going to leak. Conversely, let's say you had a very steep pipeline uh, where you've got air valves located at the high point. Because some valves need three, four, five, six, even 10 meters of water pressure to seal, it means that your pumping pressure has to be enough to get over the pipeline, but also enough pressure to make these valves seal. Now, the question is, why does it matter if the actual of the valves seal or not? Well, let's think of a couple of considerations. If you have valves that leak when you turn pumps off, then potentially you're going to be draining the pipeline. If the pipeline partially drains and then when you restart the pipeline you're going to get air discharging at a very high potential and you've got a risk of water hammer. Conversely, um, if you have leakage from an air valve in say a valve pit, when you have water leakage you can get growth of grass, you know you can encourage frogs and vermin, you can get, it's common to see you even get snakes around air valve pits that are wet which is of course is a knock health and safety issue. Um, and on top of that too as well, leaking valves create soil erosion and it's not terribly practical. So what we're going to be demonstrating here is to show how the Bermad valves really compare to other typical valves in the market and to really understand what that means. The most critical thing is if you require greater water pressure to keep valves sealed, then that's costing money. It means your pump running costs are more. It means you've got to change your pump profile. You may have to put sustaining valves, change the pipeline design to keep sufficient pressure in it. It's difficult. With Bermad, it's easy. So let's demonstrate now. We're going to fill water pressure up into this pipeline. We're going to see the gauge start to rise and we're going to see the level rising. We'll see how a variety of valves perform with the Bermad compared to some other common valves which are used on the market. We've got water mains pressure which comes through this blue valve and fills up into the common manifold here. When the water level rises, it will come up into the valves and the valves will pressurize. You will actually see as the level rises, you'll see the gauge increase and visually you'll see the water level rising in the clear control tube running up the side of the wall at the same time. So let's see how the valves perform when we introduce water pressure. So now as I open the valve, there's now water filling up into the, the manifold. You can see the level in the tube rising. You can see some of the valves are leaking already because they don't have sufficient water pressure. You can see when the level finally comes up to the Bermad valve, which is about now, there's no discharge at all. So it needs virtually no pressure to make it seal at all. 
you can see the gauge starting to rise, you can see the level rising, and you can see some of the valves are starting to have enough compression and buoyancy to make them seal against their seals. But as the pressure continues to rise, many valves on the market still need up to five meters of water pressure to seal, and that's inefficient. So here we can still see the level rising up in the tube. We can see the pressure at two and a half, getting close to three meters. And still there's some leakage, this valve's almost closed. We can see this valve is still leaking water pressure here. So it's not that there's a fault with these products, it's just that the inherent design, the buoyancy, the float mechanism, the sealing arrangement just needs more water pressure to make them seal. So here now we're almost at the top of the roof, we're at four and a half, getting close to five meters. And we can see that the Bermad valve has been dripped tight, whereas many of the other valves continue to leak. And there's plenty of water pressure in the valve. The valve is just a standard valve we've taken off the shelf. Now it's really apparent when you look at the clear tube and you look up and you see that at five meters higher than the valve, that's the amount of additional energy as compared to a Bermad valve, which you need to make these valves actually seal. It's not that they're at fault, but what that means to you as a designer is that A, you don't have to have a pump that produces that much more water pressure to make the valve seal. You have less risk of parts of the pipe draining and then recharging and having potential water hammer. And finally, from a knock health and safety issue, you've got a valve pit arrangement that is dry. that doesn't have a lot of weed growth, doesn't have soil erosion, and doesn't have the potential for vermin to be there. Bermad valve is optimal in that position because it doesn't require much water pressure. And that's what we've demonstrated at this low pressure facility. You can go to our website at bermad.com.au or if you'd like to look at some other associated animations and videos, you can go to the Bermad YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.